So I want to do this with, uh, by, by putting this work in historical context. Neuroscience has a long history, um, uh, going back to ancient uh, you know, papyruses that talk about the relationships between brain damage and changes in people's cognitive abilities and behavior. And in general, all of those advances can be placed in one of two categories. Some of them have been advances in basic science, that is just you know, answering the question, how does the brain work? Um, it's uh, intrinsically interesting, scientists wanna know. The other kind of advance that we've seen has, has been a kind of applied science advance, advances in medical science, advances in diagnosing and treating medical disorders, psychiatric disorders, neurological disorders, of which addiction would be one. Now, in the 21st century, actually very conveniently, um, from, an his, you know, from the point of view of drawing uh, hi historical timelines, um, at the beginning of a, of a new century, there is a new kind of neuroscience advance that we're seeing, and that is advances in non-medical applications. So neuroscience is now being used um, by economists, to understand the ways in which people make economic decisions. It's being used by marketers to better sell their products. It's being used by educators to teach people more effectively. It's being used by uh, uh, people concerned with national security. Um, the, the article that Sharon showed you about um, using the scanner as an anti-terror tool. The idea is that you could perhaps scan somebody's brain and find out if they're a terrorist, um, if the uh, Al-Qaeda training camp looks familiar to them, uh, and so forth. Um, there's a long list of non-medical applications for which neuroscience has just in the last decade begun to be used. Basically, the, the generalization I want to give you here is that any sphere of human life in which it's important to understand, assess, predict, or control, including improving human behavior, neuroscience can help. So now let me give you a few examples of how neuroimaging has been used in these non-medical, to, to solve non-medical problems. There's a field called neuromarketing. Um, for those of you who've been involved in marketing, you know that one of the big challenges is um, you know, trying to understand what people actually want, what appeals to them, um, and uh, if you just ask people, they don't always know. We don't always have conscious access to these reward systems that really drive our consumer behavior. This is a slide from Eric Knudsen showing, again, he can tell when somebody is gonna buy something before they know. He puts people in the scanner, has them essentially do catalog shopping, and, uh, and can predict which, which things they're gonna place an order for. There are companies, many companies in business, offering neuromarketing to, uh, to clients in the corporate world. This is um, uh, from FKF Applied Research. As you can see, they say, we look beyond the spoken word to provide immense and actionable insights into a brand, an advertisement, or a competitive framework. Um, and interestingly, you can see on their menu, there's an item called ethics, but <laughs> if you click on it, you don't see much. <laughs> okay, another interesting non-medical application of brain imaging is lie detection. Now this is, th these are results uh, from our colleagues at Penn, uh, showing that using the same kind of pattern analysis techniques that Sharon was showing you earlier, they can uh, do, if you look over here on the, uh, whoops, that's not a pointer, is it? Um, if you, uh, is that my pointer? Yes. If you look over here on the right side, um, they can approach 90% correct in judging whether somebody in the scanner is lying or telling the truth. Now I hasten to add, they're not lying about just any old thing that really that might really matter to them. It's a it's a very artificial situation, but nonetheless, this is I think 
quite a, a, an astonishing and admirable accomplishment in terms of applied neuroscience to be able to derive that much information from a brain image. I think most people in this field believe that it's not actually ready to take into the outside world and use in non-laboratory situations. But nevertheless, I think some combination of the profit motive and wishful thinking have led to the formation of companies who are actually in business offering these services to private citizens for quite a hefty sum, I'll <laughs> mention. Um, CIFOS Corporation, um, uh, let's see, you know, claiming that it's scientific and objective and all that kind of thing, which doesn't necessarily mean that it will reveal the truth. It, it will scientifically objectively tell you the level of blood oxygenase in certain places, but it's, it's, not, uh, it's not ready for prime time as a real world lie detector. And another company with the delightful name No Lie MRI. <laughs> so I want, again, you know, harking back to Sharon's question, is this fact or fiction? The, this is here now. These are companies in business um, and uh, you can, I don't advise it, but you could actually go get your brain scanned uh, and uh, try to prove your truthfulness on some matter or other. Um, 